five. Cover some concepts on human dignity. So you want to read that one, two, three, four, and five to kind of get a little bit more background in this. I'm going to start out a little general. So this is the lesson now. This is, you, you give me give me time for the lesson now. I'll, I'll remember, okay. What is human dignity? Who wants to take a shot? It's um, the fact that we have to be created by God. Created by God, the value that we have being created by God. Amen. Good stuff. Any, anybody else want to want to develop that? When we know who we are, what we're meant to be. Okay. It cannot be taken away. It cannot be taken away. Who, who, who gives it to us? Who issues it? Obama? What did you say? <laughs> the government? What, what, what? Some of you guys remember, uh, there's this whole like religious freedom, conscious thing. That, that is actually still going on. And basically, you know, what we found talking to people is just like, you know, they thought that, well, you know, the government is the one who kind of gives that right. And, and this is understanding that, you know, if you're a citizen in a certain area, then I issue a law and then that's, that's that. And we were trying to introduce to people, like, no, 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 because we are human, there are certain inalienable rights endowed to us by our Creator does sound familiar? The Declaration of Independence. And how, did anybody else, Jack, did you have uh, a hard, hard time explaining this to people? It's like they didn't get it, which is kind of scary. So that's why I wanted to take a little bit of a step back. Um, Buchika, I don't know if this is going to be seen. Okay, let's try it. Do you guys see that? Yeah. No. Yeah. Do you guys see it? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll read it. This is from, ready, the Compendium of Social Doctrine of the Church. Maybe the center one, yeah, try the center one. Mejor? No? Paragraph 108. The fundamental message of sacred scripture proclaims that the human person is a creature of God and sees in his being in the image of God the element that characterizes and distinguishes him. In other words, we weren't just created by God, we know that there's something different about ourselves. When Adam saw that, that all the animals were different, and he realized that he was created special, this is what, what uh, JP2 says, uh, the original loneliness, right? And he was like, like waiting for Eve, but that is very important because that says that he had self-reflection. A dog doesn't have self-reflection. A dog, when 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 it's you know when when it's hit with a stick, it, it it's crying out, oh, 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 oh. pain, 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 pain. It's not asking a metaphysical question about the nature of pain. Okay, uh, a, a dog doesn't write a, a poem. Uh, then there's, I'm sorry. There's no libraries in the jungle. There's everywhere from the earliest of times, even the, the, the cavemen, they would like write different things and they would like, you know, like spit paint on their hand to kind of say, I was here. There's something about being human that is different than just being an animal. We got to establish that. Okay, ready? Genesis 127, very important. God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him. Male and female he created him. God places the human creature at the center and summit of the created order. 
Because when God created the world, it was like, it is good. But when he created man, he said, it is super good. Man, in Hebrew, Adam, is formed from the earth. Adama. And God blows into his nostrils the breath of life. Therefore, being in the image of God, the human individual possesses the dignity of a person who is not just something, but someone. He is capable of self-knowledge, of self-possession, and of freely giving himself and entering into communion with other persons. Further, he is called by grace to a covenant with his creator to offer him a response of faith and love that no other creature can give in his stead. I'm going to be a little crude, but you guys are going to get my point. When Jesus came down, he did not come to save the whales. There's nothing wrong with, with, with protecting whales. He came for you. And this is an incredible dignity. Because you are capable of loving God as a person. You can't love on his level, but insofar as he is a person, you can love him back. This is an incredible dignity. And one thing, when you're working with people, I don't care if you're working with the guy that's the next up on death row. He is capable of loving God. If you're working with a guy who's been a drunk for 15 years every single day, there is that potentiality of him entering into an eternal relationship with God. And this is what we got to see that maybe nobody else sees. How many times, in fact, this just happened, sometimes we, we are Catholic people. We're the worst. We're driving, you know, um, um, say that we're driving. I'm just saying, this is going to hit home because we know that we do it. Like if, if, if uh, the Latinos drive through a black neighborhood, what do they say? What do they say? Estos morenos no quieren trabajar, right? Uh, um, you know, sometimes people drive through our neighborhoods, and I hear it all the time because I live in Patterson, right? And then people like, you know, like, you live here? Like, yeah, we live here. This is <laughs> Come on over, right? Um, and they see something and they, they immediately think something. And we, we, we automatically put an entire people in a box just by our own perception. Each and every single person is capable of loving God. Even, even Charles Manson, even Ted Bundy, even the guy that just died, I forget his name, something Ramirez, the, the mass murderers, they are capable of loving God. Now, one of the, uh, no, no tangents, I'm sorry, okay, no tangents. You guys get the point. The likeness with God shows that the essence and existence of man are constitutively related to God in the most profound manner. Someone want to take a, take a shot at that? Wrong translation. What it means is that when we enter into a relationship with God, it's not something just made up. It's not something fake. It is real. And this possibility should dominate the rest of our lives. This should be what makes us move and like want to bring people closer to the church because this is what they get. This is what's going on, okay? Man and woman have the same dignity and are of equal value. Let me repeat that. Man and women have the same dignity and are of equal value, not only because they are both in their differences created in the image of God, but even more profoundly because the dynamic of reciprocity that gives life to the we and the human couple is an image of God. Lo entendieron? Lo entendieron? Okay, so male and female, he created them. Now, why did God create a man and a woman. If we're creating the image and likeness of God, what, is God like, you know, strong? Does he have like, you know, does he beard, you know, does he, or is, is he like feminine? Does, does, 
Does does he have you know big hips? You know, this like like what is? I, I don't get it. We're created in the image and likeness of God, male and female. He created them. Look at what God is doing. Remember, God is a communion of love, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. When, when he says the image of God, it doesn't mean that just because you created in the image of God, you are become an image of God when you enter into a relationship of love, giving of your person. And this is seen first and foremost in marriage. When a man and a woman come into this commitment of life, they establish a communion of love that is like a, a, little, a little replica of, of the love that exists in the Holy Trinity. And this is the basis of culture. This is the basis of society. And from here, these other things go forward. That's why it's so important to protect the family. Ah, oh, Chihuahua. It looks, it looks big on the screen. Okay, I'll read it for you. So respect for human dignity. And we're, and we're finishing up with this. So just to know who's, who's next. A just society can become a reality only when it is based on the respect of the transcendent dignity of the human person. The person represents the ultimate end of society. The person represents the ultimate end of society. The person represents the ultimate end of society. Pope Francis, preaching it up, saying, that the crisis of the world today is that when a homeless man dies, it is not newsworthy. Whereas when if a bank collapses, everybody around the world knows, but when a poor man dies, it is not newsworthy. He said, this is the crisis in society today. When a law comes about, if anybody here wants to go into politics, anybody here wants to become a legislator, know that a law is supposed to have the human person as an end. Meaning it's supposed to put the person in the center, not as a means. And so many of our laws are, you treat people as objects. Okay, here we go. The person represents the ultimate end of society by which it is ordered to the person, quote, hence, the social order and its development must invariably work to the benefit of the human person. Since the order of things is to be subordinate to the order of persons and not the other way around. Who saw them is? Who saw, can, can, I, can I put that as a homework or like, like, like uh, 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 extra credit? There was, there was a way of doing things that was, that was so just, it was unjust. We lost the person in, 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 um, in the struggle to establish order. We lost sight of the person. By the way, it is a principle in social justice. If a man is starving and you have two loaves of bread, you don't have two loaves of bread. You have one because the other loaf of bread belongs to the starving person. So if he takes it, it's not stealing. Uh, Victor Hugo was very smart. He created a little conundrum there uh, because theologically, uh, it's totally sound for, for what Jean Valjean did. Anyway, I'll, we'll explain it later. It is necessary to consider every neighbor without exception as another self, taking into account, first of all, his life and the means necessary for living it with dignity. Every political, economic, social, scientific, and cultural program must be inspired by the awareness of the primacy of each human being over society. This is why it's not cool to have embryonic stem cell research. You can't just fertilize a whole bunch of eggs, call it tissue, and, you know, and expect us not to say something because what is, what will be human is indeed human. If it, if, if it has the potentiality of being human, guess what? It's human. 23 chromosomes and 23 chromosomes makes 46 chromosomes. Well, bang! 
and it deserves the protection of all of society, especially because those people are the weakest in society. Don't let me start on that. But this is just a brief overview. Now we want to get to the next stage. I'm going to pass it on to Rocio now.